Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to 10 is perhaps one of the most debated piece of scripture and uh, we are so much focused at times trying to look at what it says and what it doesn't say that we obviously miss what it says. Now many people have very mixed feelings about this particular scripture because it deals with tithe. If we look at verse 8 it says, Will a man rob God? That's God asking the people, yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And the response is in tithe and offering. Now let's just assume okay and let me agree with everyone that tithe is Old Testament. What about the offering? Okay, so does that mean we can rob God in our offerings? Because sometimes we just so get caught up trying to prove that tithe is an Old Testament thing and we're in the free will uh, giving as Paul speaks about as it's often quoted to, to defend the obsoleteness of tithe. But then the question is if God could say you have robbed him in offerings, do we care about that? Are we concerned? Have we ever sat to ask ourselves, is there a possibility maybe okay maybe i'm not paying tithes because i believe that is my conviction but is there a possibility that i'm robbing god in my offerings because if it's in scripture that god is accusing people of robbing him of his offerings then even though you're talking about free will offerings you can still rob god because the fact that something is free will doesn't mean you can't insult someone with what you give because we can see the case with cain and abel so this perhaps is your first sacrifice that they are offering to God and it's free will like we often mention but somehow one person's offering is accepted and the other person's offering is rejected. So in this context God is effectively saying Cain you robbed me with your offering and yet there was no standard it was free will and that is even what is even much scarier because at least with tithe you know if you have robbed God if you have given less than 10% or you have not given anything at all but now we're talking about offerings and we're talking about free will and you're realizing you can still rob God as a matter of fact, God could have possibly been rejecting every single one of your offerings this entire year or the entire last year. Have you thought about that possibility? Have you considered that? Because the fact is, God is not a liar. He says, seed time and harvest, cold and heat and all this season shall not see. So if you plant, you give, you give an offering, he says he will bless you. It's not an automatic transaction, but he has said it. So you may not expect an automatic miraculous alert immediately you drop an offering, but he has said you will receive a a blessing for that offering. So if you look at your life and you're really honest and you evaluate your offering life and you can't see the blessings of God as a result of your giving, then you probably should stop giving and take an account of your offering life based on Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? An example where I can rob God is let's take for example that my income is 500 US dollars and say my rent is $150. So I have $350 to organize a around my expenses and offerings and everything. And let's just assume that fixed bills, for example, each month is about $200. So I have $150 to do whatever I want with without necessarily getting kicked out of my house or getting my lights cut. And so with that $150, whoa, there's a new game that is out and it's $69 or $70. So I get the new game. Oh, I need a new pair of shoe or a jewelry or a bag for my wife. And I get that bag or that jewelry or for my girlfriend. And then at the end of the day, I'm left with $15 after food and everything and then I put that 10 15 dollars in an envelope and I give God based on that illustration do you think I have robbed God or not not because something is free will doesn't mean we can still rob God out of it imagine you go visiting your parents and on the journey you spend all your money on every fancy thing that you can meet on the way and then you just go there and give them the mere crumbs they obviously feel insulted and this is probably the experience of many believers every Sunday there in church. Verse 9 tells us you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation. So even if we don't agree on the concept of tithe, one thing we can agree on is on the concept of offering. And this particular scripture wasn't so much about tithe or offering as it was about our relationship of giving our best to God, taking us way back to the experience of Cain and Abel. So this is the opportunity for every one of us to take some time to sit down with God and let the Spirit search our hearts take an inventory of where our priority as far as finances are. Is it in the material things? Is it in our belly? Is it in pleasure? Or is that priority in God and in his kingdom? And that is where the blessings lie or according to verse 9, the curse. So let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. A big thank you to our patrons for helping us make this content. You too can support this channel. The link is down below. So I'm Buddha's Jim.
you Macy from Reason for Dominion. Thank you for watching and until the next video, stay blessed. That's our time in this video. I don't believe you were inspired by it. Then give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to this channel for more great content like this. Remember to take responsibility on what you learned today. This video is proudly sponsored by our patrons. You too can support this channel by visiting our Patreon page. The link is in the video description below. I want to say a big thank you to all our patrons out there. I am Buddha's Jumesi from Wisdom for Dominion. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.